Greetings, everyone. So I am Mitch Max. Thank you for tuning in. I want to talk about uh, Iggy Azalea. She recently sold the rights to her music, and she sold the rights for something like eight figures. So we don't know what the figures are. She hasn't told anyone. She hasn't disclosed that. But eight figures, just so you know, that's anywhere from eight million to ninety-nine million. So that's like one million shy of a hundred million. If she got ninety-nine million, I'm gonna guess it's somewhere in the middle. Um, but anyway, so the reason I'm making this is because I remember when she was at the height of her career and she had the song Fancy. Um, a lot of the internet, even Snoop Dogg kind of chimed in on her. A lot of the black hip hop scene was kind of clowning her and they were saying the reason she was big, the reason she was getting famous and a lot of clout and attention was because she was white. So I want to see if that impacts how much that trickles down to finances between her and her peer, Nicki Minaj, because they came out around the same time. So my guess is race isn't a factor in, in, the, in the income. And I wouldn't even say it's a factor in the exposure, um, but some people think that. So I want to see what it really comes down to, to me, is the bottom line, is the money earned. How much records they sold and what they're paid relative to that. So, and this, this is not going to be a long video. So first I want to start off, let's look at this article from Yahoo, which is fair use. Um, Iggy Azalea sells masters and publishing in an eight-figure deal, says, I don't have to work another day in my life. That's fast and that's fantastic. Anyone who can um, achieve that at her age, I think she's only something like 31 years old, never has to work again, good for her. So for those of you who don't know, she first came on the scene in America. She blew up in the States with the song Fancy. I think that was back in maybe 2015. I could be wrong. Um, I should have fact-checked that first. But that's where I first heard of her from the song Fancy. So anyway, this is the article. I don't have to read it. Um, but Iggy has been revealed to have sold her master recordings and publishing catalog and a deal worth, in Iggy's own words, an amount that means I don't have to work another day in my life. So now I want to compare her. Let's say she's getting maybe, I'm going to say 50 million. From what I know, let's see how many records she sold. To my understanding, I think she sold something like 50 million records. So how many records did Iggy Azalea sell? 50 million records. 50 million. Her net worth right now is 15 million. So she sold 50 million records. And records, of course... By today's standards, um, for those of you that are older millennials and Generation X like myself and boomers, for us, records meant cassettes, CDs, and vinyl. Today, 15 million, I think it means download sales. And I could be wrong, but that means click, go on Apple, I mean, iTunes, um, Spotify, and you click and you're willing to pay to download the song, if I am correct. So 15 million she sold. So now let's look at Nicki Minaj. Whoop, can't get that. I am on the phone. This has to wait. One second. Guys, I'm so I'm sorry for this. This is a beautiful chick that uh, I've been waiting to get in touch with, but uh, I guess she wanted to wish, wish me a happy Thanksgiving. Anyway, I'm sorry. So now I want to see what Nicki Minaj is worth. Let's find out. Let's find out. So here we go. Nicki Minaj right now is worth $100 million. So she's way richer than Iggy. So that's... Nicki Minaj also sold, not also, she sold 100 million records. So she sold double that, double that of Iggy. So she sold 100 million records and worth $100 million. So do you still think race is a factor? I'm going to say no, as I thought the answer to that is no. Nikki sold 100 million records worth 100 million. Iggy sold 50 million worth 15 million. Now, sometimes their spending habits could be that. Also endorsements, which I should have dug deeper into, but I did not. But I'm sure a lot of these artists now, they make money. They make a lot more money than the artists did back in the day, back in the 90s and 80s and 70s. Anything from, uh, I would say, from the year 2010 and up, artists are making a hell of a lot more than they used to. A good example is Michael Jackson sold the, has the biggest selling album of all time. But I remember when Thriller was out, I read an article 
um, uh, I looked up his net worth when Thriller was out, and he was worth something like seventy million dollars, the biggest selling album of all time, and he's worth seventy million. Now, if we adjust that by inflation, I'm sure that's going to put him somewhere about that would have put him at two hundred million by today's standards. But of course, when he passed away, he was worth almost a billion dollars, nine hundred million, because he learned later. Michael Jackson was always ahead of the curve with diversifying his income. He didn't just rely on his record sales. He bought publishing. So back to this. Um, for people that would say maybe race is a factor, uh, another example I would use is New Edition versus New Kids on the Block. For those of you that don't know, I'm sure that's the older millennials and Generation X. We know who New Kids on the Block and New Edition are. But when they started out, uh, New Edition was a black boy band. New Kids on the Block was a white boy band. They both came out, uh, I would say there's maybe like a few years apart. New Edition came on the scene in 83. New Kids came on the scene, I think, in 86, 87, something like that. But New Kids on the Block dwarfed New Edition. They got way more exposure on MTV. So people back then were saying that race was an issue, especially when they knew that they had the same manager and same producer, Maurice Starr, I believe his name was. He wrote all of New Edition, most of New Edition's first album and most of New Kids on the Block, Block's first album. That's why if you listen to the song, Is This The End? And Please Don't Go Girl, they almost sound exactly the same. But I want to flip that around and say... Maybe it's the audience, what your audience is willing to pay. So besides race, new kids on the block, their audience was just so loyal. They were willing to buy the t-shirts. They were willing to buy the posters. They bought the album. They bought the cassette. They paid the high ticket prices to see them in concert. I don't think New Edition's fans were that die hard. I mean, they would die hard as far as uh, watching music videos, going to their concerts, but they were not that die hard as far as to buy the music to that extent, to be that loyal to buy the music and, and skipping recording it. Because back then it was so easy to duplicate music. Um, if you had a double cassette player, you just borrowed someone's tape of a new album, put it in the cassette player, put a blank one next to it and record it. And I think that's what new, a lot of probably New Edition's fans did back then. The reason I say that I'm thinking it's more about the fans that made the difference between those two artists' sales records, not so much exposure, is because of the fans, what the fans... Um, affordability too. You know, in the additions fans were a lot of black kids and probably a lot of them, their parents probably were not willing to buy them the, the tape or whatever. Um, and another thing is if you look at, I will go back to Michael Jackson, him and Bruce Springsteen, Boy George, George Michaels, these guys were all hot at the same time. Michael sold more records than them and was paid more than them. So that's why I say, I wonder sometimes it's not so much race as much as it is the people willing to buy your music, what people are willing to do for you as a fan to support you. So uh, I'm going to wrap that up. Um, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Give this video a thumbs up, a like. Um, just so you know a little about this channel, I have two channels. This one, Mitch Max, I just share my opinion. So I may review products. I may review movies. I'll um, talk about current events and just weigh in my opinion. So this is in my opinion channel. My other channel which is Coach Mitchell H. I talk about real estate, mostly real estate because I'm a real estate investor. I'm a buy and hold investor. I own rental properties, but I have a specific audience that I rent to. I rent to people in transitional or recovery. So I get people that come out of recovery home, out of recovering, uh, out of rehabs and take them in and people that are transitioning from the prison industry or prison system. And I offer them housing and also veterans, but they, I, I, I house the ones that come with funding. So a lot of them, the ones that I deal with, all of them that I deal with, usually are coming with some type of funding from the state. So anyway, that's it. I don't mean burp on camera, but anyway, hope you like my Budweiser dad hat. Um, anyway, enjoy your day.